I'm Professor Peaver. I'm in the Department of Cell and Systems Biology. My first memory of wanting to not only do research but study the brain, I, I was in grade three and I went to the library and I picked a book up and the book was titled How the Brain Works. And it was right then that I became really fascinated with how your brain functions. And that to me is the one thing that you have to be when you're a researcher is interested and curious. The goal of our research is to understand the, the cells and the circuits in the brain, how they communicate with one another to produce normal sleep and in particular REM sleep. We're interested in this question because narcoleptics or people with a sleep disorder known as narcolepsy have a breakdown in that normal smooth process of sleeping and waking. So for example, uh, an individual with narcolepsy will be sitting here and they'll fall asleep in the middle of something that's absolutely vital. And so this is a sleep attack. And in people with narcolepsy, they have this symptom called cataplexy in which all of a sudden their muscles enter into this paralysis-like state uh, and you, you, you lose all muscle tone and you collapse. The other disorder that we're fundamentally interested in is called REM sleep behavior disorder. And it's really the exact polar opposite of cataplexy. And normally when you're in REM sleep, your muscles relax and become virtually paralyzed. But in people with REM sleep behavior disorder, they lose that normal biological uh, function and they don't have muscle paralysis. So we're really interested in understanding how does the brain get you into and out of normal REM sleep so that we can understand those two disorders, narcolepsy and cataplexy, the muscle paralysis that appears while you're awake, and then the lack of muscle paralysis when you're in dreaming sleep. When I select a student for an undergraduate project, I look at the whole package, so to speak. Um, grades are one element that I don't find com particularly compelling. In my personal opinion, it's the breadth of courses that you've taken, the enthusiasm that you've demonstrated in applying for a research position. And of course, what you do outside of university is also can also be a factor in being an attractive individual for a research project. Most of the time, students introduce themselves through email. The, the very first and most important thing is that you know who you are talking to in that email. So what type of research do we do? A blanket email is something that is an immediate turn off. Um, in selecting a student, you need to have put some thought into uh, why do you want to join my lab? What, what have you read about our research? What is interesting about our research? And how could you contribute to our research? Being prepared for the interview is hands down the most important element. And how you prepare for an interview is read about what that professor is researching, understand as best you can what that research is about and how you think you can help improve that research. Everyone has some form of skill that is helpful in conducting research, whether that be good communication skills, background in a particular area of research, of undergraduate research, laboratories that you may have taken. So there's a variety of things that you can contribute. So being prepared for the interview, um, knowing what the professor does and how you think you can contribute to the program, I think those are the three points that undergrads really need to take into consideration before they reach the one-on-one -on -one interview. Try to look into the future. Really ask yourself, where do you see yourself in 20 years? Develop a, a vision and a dream and a thirst to get yourself to that end point. You're going to get a, a crummy mark on a test or an exam, and you're gonna feel, that's it, I, I, I'm just not good enough to do this. I've been there, I think every faculty who is in the Department of Cell and Systems Biology has been there. And the one thing that keeps you alive and thriving is to just not give up. Keep your eye on the prize.